Hey everyone, thanks for joining Learn to Play Games. My name is Lance, and in today's video I'm going to take a look at a brand new game coming to Kickstarter called The Stifling Dark. This is a new one from Sophisticated Cerberus Games. It is a 3-5 to five player game that takes roughly 1-2 to two hours to play, and is a one versus many game, which means that most of the players are going to be working together as investigators to meet the different objectives that they need to and get out of this area alive. The other player is going to be playing the adversary and is going to be behind a hidden screen, which I don't have out for right now as I'm going to be showing a number of different features of this, but he is going to have a hidden role so you won't know where he is most of the game or the regular player, the investigators won't. So in this video, I'm going to take you through the main features of the game and also show you a sample turn to give you a good idea how this one plays. If you're interested in checking out a full playthrough video, I'll have a link up in the top corner where I'll play through the first, middle, and end few turns to show you how the game plays and progresses to give you a better idea on whether this one is one that you would like to back. As always, if you find these videos helpful, if you like what I do, please consider that like button and subscribing to my channel. It's one of the easiest ways you can support channels like mine so we can continue to grow and be able to produce this content. If you want to get notifications anytime I release new videos, also give that notification bell a ring and that'll let you know when I drop new stuff as I'm dropping new videos all the time, all kinds of different things, teaching videos, playthroughs, unboxings, and all kinds of Kickstarter and crowdfunding coverage. So if you want to stay up to date on all that stuff, give that notification bell a ring. So let's go ahead and head to the table and we'll see what this one's all about. The first thing we'll look at are the different investigators you can play as throughout the game. So each investigator is going to have their own card with the name of that character on the top, along with their abilities. Each investigator is going to have a minor ability that will give them some sort of unique benefit throughout their turn, such as Amelia, who has that you may treat up to three pitch black spaces as dim when you move or sprint onto them. So a really nice ability. Each character is also going to have a major ability, which is going to be a very powerful ability for that character, but they can only use it if they discard a major ability token. And if they do not have one to discard, then they cannot use the major ability. Each investigator is also going to have three different stats. Their speed, which is the number of spaces they can move during their turn or movement points that they have. Their stamina, which they can use to roll the stamina die, which will give them additional movement points and their flashlight battery, which they can use to use the flashlight, which will allow them to illuminate different areas, helping them to find different items and, and different clues that they need to find, as well as potentially revealing the adversary, which is going to be very beneficial to them, or helping their fellow investigators being able to move around, especially in pitch black spaces, which I'll cover more a little bit later. Finally, at the bottom of each investigator's card is going to be their slots for their wounds. If an investigator ever fills up all of their wound slots, then they are eliminated from the game. And these are going to have all kinds of different effects, such as a fractured foot, which is going to decrease their movement by one, or their discharge, which will have you set your charges, your battery, to zero, and then you get to flip this over to a face down side. Or other wounds such as claustrophobia, which you may not close or open doors, but is also going to have the mitigation icon, which is going to be a way that you can, if you can complete that mitigation, you'll flip this over to its face down side, and then these effects will not affect you anymore. So with the mitigation cards, they're going to have all kinds of effects as well, such as relieved, an investigator must reveal the adversary with their flashlight and this is a passive mitigation so this can happen at any later point during the game. We also have misstep which is at the beginning of your next activation you are going to gain the fracture condition so this one's going to place a condition on you. While others such as bold here has the end of the round with no flashlights on the board which means that this affects all investigators. So you have to really work together as a team, especially with some of these, to help each investigator out from time to time. On the back of each investigator's card is going to give you their play style, as well as their minor and major abilities again, and their backstory, as well as a full image of that investigator. And there's going to be a number of these included in the game, and more might be unlocked through stretch goals, such as Amelia that we've already seen, or Clara, Briella, Asher, why? Ibrahim, Mitchell, and Vincent. Now during setup, one of the players is going to be selected to play the adversary, and that player will choose one of the adversaries that's available to take on. For example, with my video here, I have the Butcher, and this is going to list his starting location, as well as the different actions he can take during his turn, and the breakdown of those. 
He's also going to have a reference card that's going to break those down even further so that you know exactly how each one of these works. So with the Butcher, he is going to be able to move five spaces, plus he's going to roll the stamina die and add that to his value. So he'll be able to, roll, he'll be able to move anywhere between seven to nine spaces during each of his turns. He can also break down doors or break doors. He, if he needs to disappear, if he has been revealed, then he must disappear. And this is how you'll do that. And then his major ability is to stalk. And this is the way he is going to get and receive stalk points that he can spend to carry out different actions. At the bottom of his card is going to be his attack and his abilities. And these are going to be dependent upon the number of players that are playing. So if you're playing with a smaller player game, this is going to scale with that. So each one of the adversaries is going to have a number of attack cards. And during setup, you're going to choose one of these to use, such as Eviscerate, which is really nasty. And this one is going to require you to spend one stock in order to use it. Each one of these cards will list the conditions of how to carry out that attack. Otherwise, he has Onslaught or Rend, which each one of these is going to have different effects if the player selects to use that. And again, during setup, he will choose one of these to gain for his attack for this game. If you are playing in a larger player game, he will also gain a number of abilities depending upon the number of players that are playing. So in this way, the adversary is going to scale based on the number of players. And each one of these is going to have different effects, such as decay, which is going to cost you stock points, or disturbing presence, escalating terror, evil eye, sinister gaze, and vengeful darkness. And again, each one of these will have effects. And during setup, the adversary will choose a number of these, again, based on the number of players that are playing. In smaller player games, these will not be used. And so you'll only have your attack card. Next, I wanna take a look at the two main boards that players are gonna be interacting with. The first one is the main board itself that is going to be the board that all the investigators are going to be on, moving around throughout the game, investigating and trying to find all the different pieces of evidence and items and all kinds of other stuff. Now, this particular location is the sawmill, and it's going to have five different buildings on it, as well as all kinds of different obstacles and things that are going to block players' line of sight, such as the truck or logs or all kinds of different little rooms that the players can check out as well. Now, throughout the game, you're going to have these different spots on here. Each one of these spaces, the players can move on and that is connected by the little gray lines. Now, inside the buildings, you're going to have the dotted lines, which are darkness spaces. These spaces are going to cost two points of movement to move through. You're also going to have computer terminals that are going to require you to do an involved interact action. And these will take the rest of your turns. You won't be able to use your flashlight or other things at the end of your turn. Now, throughout the game, during the survivor's turns, again, they can spend their batteries on their flashlights to use them and illuminate them by placing these tokens or uh, transparent templates onto the board and positioning it anywhere they want to to try to illuminate those spaces. All that's going to block that is going to be the obstacles and you're going to determine that by drawing lines through these points. And as long as it doesn't intersect with an obstacle, you have line of sight to that spot. And then it illuminates everything there, which can reveal evidence tokens, as you can see on the mini board here, that are it's going to have items and evidence tokens. And this is going to be behind the adversary's screen. So the adversary will know what is on the board, but the players will not. So they're gonna to have to use their flashlight to try to locate these different things, as well as potentially uh, locating the adversary himself. If the players are lucky enough, or if they coordinate well enough, they can kind of box him in and hopefully shed some light on where he is. Now the game itself is going to be played over rounds and each round is gonna be broken down into a number of steps. You're going to have an event that's going to be triggered at the beginning of each one of the rounds that is the storm. And this is going to, to build up over time, starting with the light storm and then moving into more of a heavy kind of storm. And then the final event on the storm that is going to last the rest of the rounds that the players are playing in. So they're going to have to deal with all kinds of nasty effects from that on top of dealing with everything else on the board. From there, then the adversary's board, again, is going to be a small version of this. And this is where the adversary will place all the different tokens and he will use his player piece to move around here unless the players have found him, in which case then he has to be placed on the main board until he can disappear and move back onto his, his small board. All right, and the final thing I wanna show you is a sample turn in action to give you a good idea how the game plays. 
So each round is going to be broken down into five steps that you're going to do in order. The first step in each round is that you're going to reveal the next event card or storm card to determine what is going to affect our players throughout this round. So let's go ahead and handle that real quick. So this one is heavy winds. So investigators do not recover stamina when outside of a building this round. So that's not good at all. And this, is, from there, then you're going to move into the investigator turns. So each investigator will get to take a turn, and you can do this in any order you want to as the players. In each round, you get to choose the order in which you activate your investigators so that you can help each other out as best as you can. So moving into an investigator's turn, during their turn, the investigator can move a number of spaces based on their movement stats. They can spend a stamina to roll a stamina die to gain additional movement points and use that. You can also interact with different things, interacting with different items that are on the board and different uh, evidence, and activating and using different items and all kinds of different stuff with that. If you are in a space that has the dotted lines around it, that is a yellow space that has the uh, three little dashes on it, that is a involved action. You can choose to do that as the last action you can do during your turn. This action will allow you to interact with that item for this particular board. All of them are computers, which will light up that particular building for a round. If you don't do an involved action, you can also choose to spend a battery and use your flashlight, which is a very unique aspect to this game. It will allow you to illuminate or brighten certain spaces, which could potentially reveal new evidence and new items, as well as potentially revealing the adversary, which is going to be key throughout the game, especially for the investigator's survival. If they can identify or find out where the adversary is that will cause all kinds of problems for the adversary player as they are going to resolve all of their stuff on their mini board behind their screen so the players don't know what's going on. So moving into let's go ahead and start off with Mitchell and take his turn. So he gets his token back as he used that during his last turn. And during this turn, he has a movement of four spaces. And so we've been able to clear a couple of buildings already. So we're going to continue working our way through and trying to find some additional evidence. So during his turn, he's going to move two spaces towards that building. And then the final spaces are darkness spaces. So those are going to cost you two movement points per space. So he's going to move into there for his final two points. Then he's going to go ahead and spend his stamina to roll the stamina die. And he rolled three more points of movement, so he can move up to three more spaces, or with the darkness spaces, just one more, as he doesn't have enough to make it the second space. All right, so that is that part of his turn. He could choose to use the flashlight if he wanted to, which I think I will. I'm going to go ahead and spend my last point and do that. That way then I can try to protect myself. Um, as the previous round, a, pre a couple rounds before, the adversary hit him uh, with his eviscerate attack action and was uh, caused him to bleed, which had him gain a couple of wounds. Um, and if an investigator ever lose all their wounds, then they are out of the game and the players have lost. So it's very critical to protect your investigators and try not to uh, take all the damage on there. So his turn is done at this point as he played the flashlight or used the flashlight. That is the last action you can do during your turn. It'll move over to the next player to go. And so our, our players have kind of split up. Not the best situation to do, but they did after anyways. And so she's going to move up two, three, and she doesn't have enough movement for her last. So she is going to spend a stamina as well and roll her die she gets three movement as well so she can move two spaces with this one as she had uh, one moving point left and then since she's on an involved space she's going to go ahead and take that action so now that building is going to be bright so when a building becomes bright then you also will talk with the adversary and tell them or ask them what is in that building at this point so now that the adversary is there he's going to reveal that there is an item on that spot there and the evidence was actually on the space that our character moved past at the beginning. And then uh, that is normally going to be the end of her turn, but she has a special ability, her minor ability, which is that she can, after taking the involved action, she may either use her flashlight or move up to four spaces. So she's going to just go ahead and move up to this space here and be on that to be ready to take that during her next turn. 
And that is all she can do. So at this point, then at the end of the investigator's turn, they're going to resolve the any effects on there, such as noise tokens or other tokens that need to be removed. Currently, we don't have any. So then it's going to move into the adversary's turn. So during the adversary's turn, he's going to construct or do all of his actions on his mini board. He gets his base movement of five points. Plus, he's always going to roll his stamina die to determine extra movement. So he's going to get seven points of movement. And for that, he is on 120, where is he at? He's right there, 119 right now. So let's go ahead and go one, two, three, four, five, six. Hmm, what do I wanna do? One, two, I'm gonna go ahead and crash through this window. So I have to put a noise token there to signify that I busted through that. So I'll drop that in there. So one, two, three, and he is not affected by darkness spaces. One, two, three, four, five, six, seven. Well, I'm gonna go here first and I can see him. So I'm going to give him a spine shell and now if I can get a second time, if I can do that a second time during his next turn, then I will gain a stock point that I can spend to do different things. So I'm going to place a marker here signifying that this is where I spotted him from. And I'm going to finish my movement up here and end there. So I'm on S2 at this point. All right, so that is the end of the turn. And then the final step is the end of end of round phase. During this phase, if you have any other uh, things you have to clean up, any flashlights that the players used are removed and given back to those players, and any other tokens or anything that needs to be removed will ta be taken care of at this point, such as the bright symbols and such. So that is the end of the turn, and you would start a new round at this point, continuing on. So I hope you found this video helpful in deciding whether or not this is one that you want to back on Kickstarter. As always, if you have any questions or comments, please leave those in the comment section below and I'll do my best to answer them. Or swing by the Kickstarter's main page and drop any questions you have there as well. I'm sure the creators would love to hear from you and are more than happy to answer any questions you have. Until next time, I'll see you later.